Hey guys, we're hanging out in Southern California with the Bulls crew. This is Joaquin. How's it going? I'm doing good, and you? Good, man. I love your shirt. <laughs> Having fun out here looking at the new Fazua motor. This is a German company. They launched around 2013 and 2017 was the first year that they actually put these on bikes. I saw them at Interbike years ago and they it was only offering like 25 kilometers per hour, 15.5 miles per hour. Now with North America, they're getting up to 20 miles per hour. So that's really cool to see. And what are the bikes that we're looking at here, man? We're looking at the Alpine uh, Hawk Evo, which is the road bike and then the Wild Flow RS um, Evo. Dude, full suspension, mountain bike, gotta love that. It's neat to see the Fazua motor on two different styles of bikes. And this thing is just really versatile the way that it's set up. So, you know, we've got the charger here, standard two amp, about 1.4 pounds, but I like that it's got that Rosenberger magnetic charging port. So, you know, if you trip over it or something, it won't necessarily pull the bike over. And it's just a little bit more seamless. It's, it's a nice solution. It does cost a little bit more, but it's becoming more of a standard. And then down here, we've got this tube that actually incorporates both the battery and the drive unit. Okay, so you can see at the base of this thing, there's like this little triple thing. It kind of moves around a little bit, it actually would spin. That's that's the motor, it's like spinning. And then it goes into this transmission at the bottom bracket there. And it's a fairly narrow Q factor. Uh, I've asked the Fazua team and they're gonna get back to me with Q factor and I'll have those stats back at the website as always and in the forums. Uh, but I just wanted to talk about weight because to me, weight is a big deal. It's really nice to have a bike that you could ride with a little bit of assist up to 60 Newton meters of torque, um, but you can also take that thing off and it's supposed to just sort of freewheel and, and not introduce any drag uh, at, at the bottom bracket. So there's some sort of a, I guess it's like a down tube cover or something that you can get that doesn't include the, the motor or the battery. And I don't know if that weighs half a pound or something. We don't have one here, but you know, then you've got like a regular bike experience. Otherwise, maybe you can pick this up, Joaquin. We can kind of show uh, what all goes into this. I can talk about the weight a little bit here. So at the one end, see there's a push button. If we slide this out, that's the actual battery right there. They use Samsung cells. This is 36 volt, seven amp hours, 252 watt hours. And that weighs 3.1 pounds all on its own right there. And then on this side, see it's kind of hollow, but at the base, we've got another Rosenberger interface and then the, the motor's like right in there. So I thought that was kind of cool. It's 4.2 pounds for that. So you add the two together at 7.3 pounds combined and that's what you'd be removing from the frame. So again, you know, roughly seven pounds comes off of the bike if you just wanted to ride it like a regular bike. Um, and that's really lightweight for, for a motor and battery. Now there is a little bit more weight down here at the kind of the gearbox, that bottom bracket area, that's 2.8 pounds. Uh, Fazua, it's, it's really interesting the way that they set it up. They've got a couple of different control pad interfaces. So there's this one right here that's on the handlebar. And here we've got a little accessory bar because this is like a drop bar setup. So it sticks out in front, maybe not quite as usable as reachable, but then it gives you multiple hand positions. I like that they're able to, to kind of mix that in. And there's another unit that would connect right there where that button is. Um, so it wouldn't be as reachable while you're riding, but the cool thing is you're able to turn the bike on and power the system on all in one go. As it stands, can you show us the, the end piece right here? See that right there? There's like a power button and a little LED indicator. You have to turn that on before you can activate the bike. Uh, so it's a two-step process and a little bit, a little bit time consuming, it takes a little bit of extra energy because you actually have to unlock the battery. It pops out and you press power there and then you press power here to get them going. But Joaquin, you were telling me that once you turn it on, it's, it's kind of in standby mode for nine hours? Correct, yeah. Okay, so I mean, it's not terrible, but you know, the battery capacity is, is one trade-off with this system. Uh, being a little bit lower and having a little bit lower torque, you, maybe you're not gonna burn through it quite as quickly. It's 250 watts to 400 watts peak. Yep. You know, compared to some of these other, other bikes, maybe 500 watts or even up to 750 watts here in the United States. So this is a little bit more efficient and it's a little bit more gentle um, especially on the two lower assist levels. The higher assist level, you definitely notice it more, but the maximum RPM support is also a bit more limited on this system. So I was talking to a rep earlier and they were like 65, 85, they're working on getting that higher, but by comparison, Bosch gives you up to like 120 RPM and maybe even higher with some of their newer Gen 4 setups. So to me, this is like, okay, you know, you're coming up a, a hill like this. It's not the steepest hill in the world, but you wanna keep 
keep kind of your momentum and, and not get too tired out, you can pedal up to uh, 85 rotations per minute and get a little bit of motor help climbing. And then once you're beyond that, it decouples. It doesn't introduce any additional drag. And, uh, you know, at least that's what they're kind of saying. It's, it's designed to let you ride at or above 20 miles per hour uh, very efficiently. And then the motor isn't helping so much so you're not draining the battery capacity. So to me, it's really interesting. It's a really cool trade-off, a little bit more minimalist, lightweight. I mean, this is like a less than 35 pounds for that carbon road bike. Actually, both of these are carbon fiber, aren't they? Correct, yeah. Yeah, some really cool bikes. Uh, so we're going to be doing some reviews and actually riding them and showing more of the system. But I thought it would be cool to just do a quick update and show you guys what's going on here. With three levels of assist, you get 75%, 150%, or 240% assist. It does measure your rear wheel speed with like the spoke and the little uh, reader. You can see it on this bike pretty clearly. Pedal cadence and pedal torque. And I did test that earlier, you know, I was pedaling along and if I didn't push, the motor really didn't activate. So it seems to be pretty dynamic. Okay, so I'm gonna ride around on this, just give you guys some feedback, what it sounds like and how it performs. We've got a few different levels of assist. Breeze is green, river is blue, and rocket is this like pink red. You'll notice that that top LED is not lit up at all. And by the way, they aren't actually flashing. That's just my camera interfering um, with the LEDs here. So that top one would go yellow or red and it's sort of an error indicator. Keep, a, keep that in mind, I guess, if you're riding. And then we've got 10 bars here. So that's 10 steps, 10% 10 increments, pretty cool. And then all these white LEDs over here just to signify the up and down buttons. And the center one is, is a power button. If you hold it, it turns it off. They do have a really cool Bluetooth app. Gives you a lot of feedback, kind of everything you'd want to know about battery capacity. Um, Unfortunately, there isn't like a USB charging port or anything. And really this is not the high capacity battery compared to some others that we see. So maybe it's not such a bad thing that you can't tap into it. You wouldn't want to drain it too much. Although a cell phone shouldn't do too much anyway. Um, having a Bluetooth app would be nice. It gives you feedback on calories and everything like that. And I'm just gonna take off. And you'll notice, you know, there's a little bit of a whine as I pedal along. This is a geared motor, geared mid-drive. And as I pedal backwards, it does not cycle the, um, it doesn't cycle the chain rings. It just kind of spins backwards. Which is, it's not a huge deal, but I think about that sometimes when I'm going in to do like drivetrain maintenance, like lubing my chain and stuff. And they talk about it decoupling uh, above 20 miles per hour, or really a certain RPM rating would be my guess. Again, 85. I think I'm going close to 85 there. I'm gonna try to really spin it this time. There we go and see if we can. That was way above 85. That was probably above 120, but I could still hear the motor in the background. So I'm not sure how they have it set up. Apparently manufacturers can go in and make some adjustments. And this is a bit of a prototype from Bulls. You can actually see the battery pack kind of hanging down there a little bit like that. It would not look like that in the final product, but it's worth noting that this does not have like a two-step release like some of the Bosch power tubes and other systems do. So you want to be careful when taking that battery out. Okay guys, from here you can see the Fatsua motor, mid-drive right there. I'm gonna change gears and stuff as we ride. Uh, this system doesn't have shift detection like some of the Bosch systems do, uh, but it uses a standard size chain ring, which is kind of nice. A lot of the new systems are. So I'm in the highest level of assist. Here we go.
Hey guys, we're back in the Bulls garage and we got the app working. So I wanted to show you this, it's pretty cool. It was pretty easy. We just turned on Bluetooth, uh, found the bike, uh, synced with it. We were able to confirm it was this bike, considering we have a couple bikes floating around. Just we turned the cranks and we noticed some activity and it was like, okay, cool. It let us add a little ID picture there. You can unpair if you want to. And then there are these three different readouts. So right now, uh, battery percentage, it says 86%, very nice, a little bit more precise than those 10 bars we talked about before. You tap on it, it allows you to switch to like power, and this says, okay, how many watts are you using as you ride? And then speed, just how fast are you going? So it's pretty simple. Uh, there was a graphic on the website that had a few more readouts like kilocalories and average speed and max power, things like that. Uh, so I'm not seeing those on the app right now. Maybe those are something we're gonna see in the future. But I wanted to call out that in addition to being yellow or red, if, if there are like diagnostic issues, that first LED, it also goes green when you are paired to the app. We thought that was really cool. Um, when you go into the second level of assist, those that's the green is its color. So it would kind of blend in. You might wonder like, oh, are there 11 bars of battery? But you can actually see we've lost a bar there at the top right now. So yeah, that first LED is, it denotes that you're connected to the app or there's an error. So this is pretty cool. I've done my best to do a quick introduction to this thing and kind of suss out the details. I welcome your comments and feedback below. Maybe you've seen this at one of the Bulls dealer events or a local dealer, or you just got some insights. If you live in Europe, please, I welcome your feedback. I do my best to review these bikes. As excited as I am about the lightweight and sort of the modular design, there are some trade-offs in terms of torque, range, some of these other aspects. So. It's, this is really a hybrid. There's like e-bikes where you're like throttling it and it's just taking you like a scooter. And then there's regular acoustic bikes where it's light, but maybe climbing is gonna make your knees sensitive. Or you're gonna get winded or something like that. And then there's this, which is kind of right in the middle. And it's neat to have that option. So we'll see you back at the site. I'm gonna be reviewing both of these bikes and I welcome your feedback in the forums. Have fun, we'll see you next time.